clip. This is taken from the short show on April the 5th, where he basically um, reveals that he's got a stand-up special coming up soon, Brendan Shaw, that he's releasing on YouTube, which is going to be wild. I'm interested to see if it's going to have the comments open, whether he's going to disable the like thing. Like, it's going to be fucking insane. Like, I don't know. Or let's just see. But anyway, he announces he's going to do his specials, releasing... Um, and he basically announces why he decided to not put it on um, streaming platforms or have it with a network and whatnot. And for me, it sounds like a lot of cope. It sounds like a lot of lies. It sounds like a lot of embellishment. Because think about it. Even if you do, even if you believe the guy, it's hard to believe him because if you're willing to lie about being a headliner at a festival, that doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things because most people don't care I'd, I'd imagine i don't know maybe like it's a weird thing to lie about because you're you're lying to fans who don't care and you're trying to lie to yourself when you know you're the truth but also your peers who are stand-up comedians they also know you're lying because they're headliners themselves Do you know what i mean it just doesn't serve any purpose but regardless we move i think that's a cope and i think that's a lie because if you're willing to lie about that then more likely i don't think that you had loads of offers for your stand-up i just don't get it i just don't get it so anyway let me let's let's just let's just play in and hear brendan say why he decided to do his special the way he's doing it and like i said i'll try and stop it every two minutes or so so i'm not you know interrupting it too much let's get it on the screen first you silly idiot here we go all the fight but if you want to be uh you know if you want to get dumber and listen to us uh talk about who knows what uh probably my tan for about three hours tune into us that's the calabas fight campaign this saturday at 7 p.m with mitrio and josh thompson brian callen and myself so yeah man glad to be back but god dang do we hit the ground running this april man your boy got some billboards and it's all self-funded that's the cool thing about this is um i made a decision a few weeks ago um just everything I'm doing, you know, I've obviously stepped a, away from uh, Showtime. That's why you're watching this on Thick Boy. I just decided to take control of my own business and do it all. No, I trusted it too short there. But the first thing to check for, don't you find it interesting that <clears throat> on this show, he seems to be or comes across his most honest and maybe true self. You actually get him as a person like if you're a fan of him you probably this will probably be the show to check out more so if you're a fan of brendan like this seems to be a bearing representation of who he is as a human being and he also does that weird thing where he swallows like kind of like dry swallow thing the same thing that he's doing during the area hawani beef now i don't know if that's like a tell in terms of him divulging things or being a little bit vulnerable because he doesn't want to be vulnerable he doesn't want to show weakness or da -da -da -da. i don't know it's very interesting that he does that sort of thing but you do get the you do get a feeling that he's being sincere. It's just the little embellishments, like stepped away from show, show time. Did you? St Technically, you did step away, but if they offered you a new contract, you would have taken it. Come on, let's not let's not lie. Just just doesn't make. But I guess I'm saying this because I'm just a regular dude who's not part of Hollywood in any way, shape, or form. Maybe this is what they do. Maybe this is part of what you do out there. You just embellish and lie and because that's part of the game like oh what are you up to i'm working on a script um i'm auditioning um i'm writing a book i'm starting a network right you just say these things to make it seem like you're doing stuff when really you're just like everyone else you're on you're on you're on your twitter feed and your instagram feed you know stealing memes and shit and sending them to your friends you know what i mean that's basically what we're all doing but i don't know myself you know i obviously have a team now i have a staff but i just wanted to do it uh the way exactly how i want to do it and obviously it takes time it takes time to grow and stuff like that which i'm never afraid of um and then with the special i shot it with my team in in dallas at the Aston improv you won't even be able to tell it's the Aston improv because we completely redesigned the uh the background and the stage and stuff like that shout out to brian johnson and we made it kind of the Dallas skyline with some stars in the back. It's pretty dope. You'll see it soon. And so, uh, yeah, I brought my whole team out there. We shot it on these fancy cameras where they read Sony cameras, some shit. My, my boy Peter in Dallas helped out as well. Um, 
So yeah, just the, my whole team shot this thing. We shot it, edited it, and then uh, we shopped it around. And we had several offers from uh, from companies and businesses. You guys would all know where every other comic is at. And uh, we're my team, as far as team, team, I mean manager and agents. Were you know they're in Hollywood, so they're like, oh, let's go here with it, or let's go here with it, or you should take this and this. And I was going to do it, man. I, I was waiting for the one I wanted most to, to land, and it landed. And I thought that's what I wanted. And then uh, about, I, I said, they said, all right, well, we'll just, we'll, we're waiting for the contract. Soon we get you sign it. And this is how much we're going to pay you, and blah, blah, blah. So, I, okay, that's cool. And then uh, I fell asleep that night and woke up at three in the morning. I'm like, dude, you're doing all this shit on your own. Everything, man. The fight companion. The food trucks, the flashback fight nights, Fire and the Kid, King and the Sting, the shop show, the, you have your own studio, the whiskey, the Thick Boy merch. You, I'm just doing all this on my own. And then I, I'm, I'm not anti-Hollywood. I'm far from that. I respect what they do. But I'm definitely not Hollywood. I don't consider myself a celebrity in any facet. And then here I am waiting for the approval on, you know, these major companies, which we got, which I'll be honest, feels good, especially where I'm at in the game. As far as stand up, I always look for that validation because, you know, I feel like I'm the punter on the football team when it comes to stand up comedy. You know, like, yeah, you're you're on the team, but. I don't believe him. Just call me a cynic, call me a hater much as you want. I just don't believe him. it just doesn't make any sense. He's given zero indication that he's ever wanted to self-produce his special and put up on his own channel. Um, the idea of maybe taking some cash up front from a, you know, production company, no, no, from basically a network or a streaming platform, and then basically using them their funds to basically produce your own show, it's a, it's something that he's always been a fan of. The same guy that wouldn't listen to reason and took the Showtime deal in the first place, which everyone advised him not to take, especially how soon and green he was in comedy and ended up being an unmitigating disaster. If anything, it set him for as much benefit as that show gave him, because I'm I'm in the minority and I think it definitely was a smart decision business wise because getting in business with Showtime that early afforded an opportunity to be you know they're basically mma spokesperson until they find uh, found a brand new shiny toy in flipping luke thomas and whatnot but it afforded an opportunity to obviously align with them for a long time uh, a flipping steady check that was able to pay for people's flipping salaries and shit yeah i mean all this sort of stuff made a lot of sense but in terms of his comedic reputation or his stand-up chops or whatnot it really didn't and no favors having that special on showtime it was too big of a platform. It was too shiny. The material was dead. He was horrible. It just was a terrible, terrible, terrible stand-up special. Like objectively, really bad. Like the kind of thing that you wish you you could delete. That's how bad it was because it was just too soon. It's fair enough if you're just horrible at stand-up, right? That's just. I guess it's just it's kind of like an objective thing, right? Like it depends who you like. Some people think Mark Norman's funny. Some people don't think it's funny. That's one thing. But doing a special year, two years into what you're doing, it just sounds like insane. It's like playing like Glastonbury a year into you buying a guitar from fucking Argos. Like what? Does that make, doesn't make any sense. So he set himself for fail there. That guy, I just don't think suddenly overnight decides, you know, I'm going to bet on myself and do this. I think if anything, this is a cope, especially off the back of what happened at Showtime, because I definitely think it was more so them saying, we're not going to renew your contract. And then him saying, hey, can I put a narrative out there that, you know, we decided to walk away and they just said, we don't fucking care. I think that's what then essentially happened. So if you're going to run with that narrative, it makes sense to continue the narrative and say, hey, I'm better than myself. Because if I remember correctly, back in the day, when Schultz was talking about doing his own thing and being on Patreon, all this sort of stuff and uploading clips, Brennan was very hesitant to it. He didn't, he's not, he, like, I don't think there's many clips of him doing stand-up online. So it's very strange for the same person who hasn't got no clips of him do stand up online, zero. Not there's not a lot of funny clips either of him talking on the podcast because so there's not a lot of funny moments in the TFAC care anymore. To suddenly then go, you know what? I'm gonna release my special on YouTube. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add up. So I think he probably didn't get the offer he wanted. He got some offers for sure because he kept talking about Comedy Central. So I'm sure he got a Comedy Central offer. And Comedy Central essentially is just now a YouTube channel. 
So that makes sense. Why would you take money from them to put on YouTube when you just put on your own channel, right? And just and get all the rewards, right? And reap all the benefits, especially considering how divisive he is, right? He's probably going to get a million views off that in the first week because people are going to want to tune in and see how terrible it is. So it makes sense that way. But I just don't believe this idea that there was loads of offers. It just doesn't make sense. Like, like number one, material wise and talent wise, why would you want to? submit loads of offers to a guy like that it doesn't make any sense it's going to be more trouble than it's worth um and also i listen to a lot of shows and from what i've listened to or gleaned someone like a tim dylan can't get a call back from netflix mark norman had to put his special out on youtube because no one wanted to take it either even though you know he was doing a lot of cool stuff on youtube right those kind of um rooftop shows you're doing on youtube are fucking sick check out mark norman's channel really really good and a few other people as well at least on, on youtube but most of them did it out of just you know not being maybe the darling of hollywood and maybe being a little bit controversial figure and deciding you know what i'm gonna do it on my own and then have them maybe crawl back later when they see the numbers makes sense obviously schultz did the opposite and spoke about doing his own thing and it took the, the netflix money but you know I, I appreciate the flagrancy in that one, but I just don't believe this narrative. I really don't. He's just lying for the sake of it. I, I think, but for, as per usual, Brendan, there's a more sort of truth there. For sure, he got one offer, maybe two, but they weren't, you know, they're just basically put on our YouTube channel. So if that, you know, if that's the case, then why not just put on your own Fickboy channel? That makes complete sense in that regard, but I'm curious to see what this special's like because if it's anything like that material that got leaked on the subreddit, I, I I can't imagine those comments will be fun. Like they're not going to be fun. You know, you got you got to prove yourself, which you know I don't think I'll ever get over that. But that's my own doing. So we got the approvals, and then you know the Moon Tower Comedy Festival comes along. These other festivals come along, which is all fine and dandy. And um, it just something didn't feel right. It just it didn't feel. Um, like it was the right choice to make for me as an individual. And I know uh, the agents and managers worked hard on selling this thing and we've shopped around and met with all these people. And, you know, when, when you go, okay, what can you guys do? And they tell you what they can do. Every single man went, ah, man, I bet I could figure that out. I bet I could do that myself, man. Yeah. The, you know, monetarily the money you would get from it's cool, but I feel like, all the stuff that they offer and all these comics are waiting for these approvals and they think, you know, getting a billboard or this commercial or this or that is a big deal. And it is, but you don't need them to do it. You really don't. And um, so I woke up that next morning and I think too, I'm a little salty at mainstream in Hollywood too, the way they've treated a, a number of my friends, particularly Joe Rogan. And I just thought, man, you've talked all this shit and you've supported these guys and then you're waiting for validation from these Hollywood execs. That's when I knew it was chatting shit. That's when I knew it was world lie. What does Joe Rogan getting cancelled have to do with you and your stand-up special being on YouTube? There's no correlation whatsoever. Don't get me wrong. It could be delusions of grandeur, right? Putting his name next to Joe. Because I've, I've heard him say this a couple of times where he's like, oh, I'm the next one. I'm taking a baton from Joe. I'm the next one coming up. It's like, what? Like, I'm replacing. I'm going to be the one to come. Like, it's delusional, right? To say the least. But what does the attacks on Joe Rogan throughout the pandemic to do with Ivermectin and all these other shit that's happening to him have to do with his stand up special? Zero. The fact that the mainstream media decided to, you know, turn their heads to Joe made sense because he was this, he has an, like, in their, in their minds, he has an outsized influence um you know the, the amounts of views he gets the, the the streaming numbers the download numbers the obviously the money from netflix it makes sense why they'd want to cancel him because he was getting too big right they wanted to kind of dim his light somewhat but as per usual mainstream media are completely out of touch and they didn't realize that he has a fan base that's like built in built in they're not going anywhere so you can do what you want cancel him. You know, even if you got taken off of spotify he'd be completely fine no problem whatsoever but i don't see how that equates to him thinking oh this is a reason why i'm not gonna i'm gonna put my thing on youtube and not wait for approval from the hollywood elites what does that even mean and also my friends what is he talking about rogue is he talking about chris lee and brian you're salty at 
the industry for how they reacted to two of your friends being accused of rape and flipping sexual assault. You're, you're upset about their reaction to it. Like, what? What do you want them to do? Did you want them to keep Chris and Lear in the movie, a Hollywood movie? Did you want them to keep somebody that's been accused of sexual assault? Then you have the whole press junket and promo about the movie be centered around one person who's not even the lead in the movie and if he did it or didn't do it. Is that what you wanted? You wanted the Goldbergs and school and whatnot to keep a guy around that's been accused of rape. Like, really, is that what you wanted? You wanted them to stick by the old guys being accused. Again, obviously you're innocent until proven guilty, but whilst the investigation is going on, you can't go to the party. you got to stay at home. I mean, you've got to relax. You've got to chill out. But these guys are just so delusional in terms of their... I don't, I don't get it. I really don't. I, I I just don't understand it, man. Like I, the correlation to me doesn't make sense. So that's why I knew he was lying. But anyway, let's continue. Executives, which you got because they gave you several offers on your special, but it just doesn't seem like uh, the right fit for, for me. So I woke up the next morning. And I called the team, my agents and managers, and said, uh, "Hey, I'm gonna put on Thick Boy." I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet on myself. I'm going to put on Thick Boy. It just seems like the right thing to do. Obviously, they argued that. They're not huge fans of it because obviously, and it's their job. This is what they do. They go, well, this is the reason you should go with this, this, this platform and this. And obviously, they get 10% of whatever they give. But if it's on Thick Boy, nobody gets anything. Me and the team and the way this business is structured, what I get, though. the team gets as well. So everybody's compensated. So um, I just told him that that was the move. I'm releasing myself, and I want to prove to uh, other comics out there. You know, I I know how uh, nerve wracking it is getting validation from these big companies and entertainment businesses and getting on their platforms, but you don't need it. You don't need it. You really don't. You can do it yourself. And uh, if any comic out there actually wants me to break it down financially you know, from shooting to the billboards, to the commercials, to the sizzles, the marketing, the photography, everything, I would gladly sit down with you and break it all down for me. And I think once you have a clear idea on what exactly goes into shooting special, the cameraman, the editing, the, the coloring, the sound quality, um, the billboards, the sizzles, the commercials, the photo shoots, all that stuff, and then the PR tour, you look at that and go, I got the man, yeah, and I, and I can control everything. I can put out as many clips as I want. I can edit this. I can say this. I don't have to worry about, you know, I had some new some jokes in there and a certain corporation that like that. Well, who gives a shit, man? You can do it yourself. So that's what I'm doing, man. That's what I'm doing. And uh, I look, okay, let's end it there. Um, let's be fair. If we're being fair, it's a really smart, and clever decision to release his special on YouTube, especially if he's trying to grow this whole Thick Boy network sort of thing. I don't know what it is at the moment, right? But this Thick Boy sort of like umbrella. If that's the fact that he wants to make his own production company or whatever it may be on network, it would make sense for you as the marquee sort of guy on there to basically put your best work on that network. It wouldn't make sense to have your own network and then have your special on a completely different platform. It just doesn't make any sense, right? I get that. <clears throat> and also, if we're being objective and we're being fair, and we're being honest, he's never going to be funny. He's never going to be like hilarious on stage anyway. So if that's the case and you make most of your money doing podcasting and, you know, other things, stand up is just like a good add-on. Why not just release it on your own platform so that you're kind of away from the general kind of cycle and schedule and whatever it may be of like the mainstream kind of stand up industry sort of thing? You know what I mean? Because most stand ups do specials like what every year or every two years or whatnot, right? So, why not if you're just outside and doing your own thing and uploading on YouTube? You could do that every six months if you wanted to, you could do it every four years if you wanted to whatever you could make one 45 minutes one 65 minutes one 30 minutes it wouldn't matter because you're basically doing it on your own platform and it could be a different it could be a different format you could move it you know you can move it around you so you could fuck around with it and be a bit more experimental so that makes complete sense that way and obviously monetarily wise you know i mean if you if you if you're gonna give people views on youtube why not just do it on your own youtube and make all the ad sense and like i said because he's such a divisive figure 
there's going to be a lot of hate watchers on there. For sure, there's going to be people that's going to rip it and not want to give him views, but there's going to be a lot of people just click on it to be to be kind of nosy. Because I'd imagine, like, what do you guys think the views are? I bet the views for his first special, the you'll be surprised. I bet the views for that, if we could see the numbers on the back end, I bet they're crazy. I bet they're in like the 10 plus millions, maybe 20 million. So if that's the case, he can, and you, and you could do maybe a fraction of that on YouTube, easy. You can easily crack a million in a week or maybe a couple of weeks. If he gets to maybe five, 10 million on YouTube alone, people just shitting on him and disliking and leaving mad comments. That's money in the bank. That's all going to add to his engagement. That's going to let the channel grow, especially if he leans into it a little bit. I don't think it's a bad idea. I just think, unfortunately, for me, not for me. I just I feel, unfortunately, as a, not even for me, is it for me? I just feel, unfortunately, in general, as a stand up, it's just the disappointing thing with him is that you never hear him talk about jokes. You never hear him talk about bits he's trying to put together. Him saying, maybe, oh, this is the fun. Like, you know, you hear loads of comics say, oh, this special is the best one I've done. I'm really trying to come with the funnies. I move stuff around. I put the real big killer bit here in the beginning. I did this. I took, you know I mean, like, like going through the actual mechanics of putting together a special and the artistry and the creativity involved in it, the writing process. You don't hear him talk about any of that. It's always, you know, marketing, this, that. That's the most thing he talks about mostly. But that's the most thing he talks about. That's the thing he talks about the most, um, which makes sense because, you know, probably it's what he cares about the most. Um, but you know or maybe that's an acceptance on his part that he's never going to be funny funny because that's a that's the thing as well about it it's just like it's very difficult you'd imagine for a person who's been a jock stud athlete for a long period of time never somebody that got really picked on you'd imagine you know somebody maybe came from a somewhat affluent background um to suddenly now go into an art form where you need to be self-deprecating where you need to be vulnerable where you need to be honest to a fault sort of thing right and really kind of bear your soul on that stage you know to be funny because i remember hearing jessica kirsten on tim dylan saying the same thing she said something like oh whenever i see someone really funny on stage i usually think to myself okay that person he or she is really fucked up the, the funniest people are usually the people that have got the most pain so whenever you see somebody else killing on stage it's usually like an example you know an indication that okay this person's really hurt it's like the duality of being a stand-up right or in any art form, right? Just bearing your soul and kind of being vulnerable and tapping into painful parts and making art from it and telling a story, blah, 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 blah. But point blank, it's just difficult and now you're an impossible. I think he's proved so far to go from being somebody that's just not funny and then try to be funny, especially in your 30s. It just doesn't happen because he's never tried, you know, he always says, oh, my dream, uh, my heroes were Jim Carrey and Adam Sandler. Yeah, cool, but you were never dreaming about being a stand-up. You didn't have bits that you were doing and all this sort of stuff. You never did that. It was always just wanting to be an athlete, and obviously that didn't work out, and that's, you know, he had an amazing parachute, like probably, he said, one of the best post-UFC careers ever, you know, in the history of the world. I think he's definitely inspired a whole group of people to do what he's doing, but stand-up thing is just... I've always said anyway, I don't know why he does it. I just think he should just focus on the shows, the podcast, and maybe do live shows for the podcast and maybe make them fun and whatnot. That would be pretty cool. Make them, I don't know, make like a concert, like a fest. I don't know, do something. The standard thing I think is waste of time, in my opinion. It's like, why waste your time if you're not ever going to be funny? You don't ever care about being funny. You just want to, what, get specials so you can get views to then propel your podcast, make your money. If you could, if that's the case, if the if the special is just a way for you to get more eyes on the stuff that you actually like to do, then just focus on the thing you like to do. Do you know what I mean? It's like, anyway. But what do I know?